thanks to the supporters of channel member Adam Fitzpatrick. Well, our final season at Bourne could be about to just sort of fizzle out in this episode if things don't go our way. We've got the second leg of the first knockout round of the Champions League against Bayern Munich, and we only managed to draw the first leg, plus a must-win Premier League game that if we don't win, we're out of the title race. For good this time. This is going to go one of two ways. Cross your fingers, boys and girls. Hello and welcome to part 165 of Born Again. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our Champions League first knockout round, second leg game against Bayern Munich, and we're away against Arsenal in the Premier League. The only thing that's happened since you were last here is we lost against Manchester United in the FA Cup fifth round. It was our second string and there was a late goal. So I'm not that upset about it. It does mean that the players playing against Bayern now are pretty well rested coming off the back of that one. So we're going straight into the game. No, we're not, because Addo's picked up an injury, and I thought I'd pick the team, and apparently I haven't. Um, so let's just shuffle these bits around. Everything else seems right. Um, I guess Labinkovic is going to be the guy to come in here if he is fit and available. He is. So let's get Addo off of the bench. And then, you know, can't pick my own bench. It's against the rules. Um, so that gets Agostino back on there. Okay, I can live with that. So, team... For Bayern Munich, in a must-win game, we've got Mendoza in goal. A back four of Giladucci, Da Silva, Diaz and Fus. Bernier at the base of the midfield. Steinman returning from injury. Um, is he fit to play the whole game? He is. Steinman and Labinkovic in midfield. And then Cook, Domenico and uh, Sermi, Tarsena, Jackie are our front three. This is a big one, boys and girls. <laughs> I will be so upset if, after, if the year after winning the Champions League, we get knocked out in the... Uh, in the first knockout round the year after. And we can trace it all back to that Marseille game where Serna Jackie got... I'm not, gonna, I'm not pinning all the blame on Serna Jackie. Let's face it. He single-handedly won us the Champions League last year. But his recklessness... It's the only red card I've ever known him have. But it was a, it was a big one. It was a significant one. That game against Marseille way back when, getting himself sent off after seven minutes... If we don't lose there, we win our group, we don't face Bayern, we don't get into this pickle. It all traces back to there. Hopefully, we can pick up a victory today and then it doesn't matter anymore. Because if we once, if we can get past Bayern, then everything everything's a lottery in the Champions League from then on. As far as I'm aware, it's not seeded from this point on. It's just this first round that's seeded based on those groups. And we just got we just got to get past them. At the end of the day, if you're the best team in Europe, you've got to be able to beat everybody anyway. So... If you are going to be good enough to win the Champions League, you've got to be good enough to beat Bayern Munich. That just goes with the territory. So we beat some good teams on the way to the final last year and hopefully we're about to uh, remember how much fun it was winning the Champions League last year. Labinkovic has done very well here. He's kept his run going um, and it ends up falling to Cook, who's a, it's a very sloppy pass, doesn't find Giladucci and has left us under a lot of pressure on this counter-attack. Now Bonilla's chasing back to try and cover for Giladucci, and all he's done is given away a penalty. So, all in all, an absolute pile of turd from everybody involved in that. Starts with Cook, Giladucci's out of position, Bonilla's sloppy, and now we need Mendoza to make a big penalty save, or we are leaving ourselves with a lot to do, but he makes the save. And turning point, anybody? Feels like it should be. Let's go on and win this game. Now, we've had our early scare. Mendoza's got us out of jail. Now, let's go and... Let's go and put Bayern Munich in their place. We were poor in the first leg and they weren't able to score against us. They're probably thinking the exact same thing about us. But we've got we've got a hope. We've got to believe we're better than they are, but they've scored. Oh. Oh. Ah. I don't have words. I've just got noises. Ultimately, if we score an equaliser, we're ahead in the tie because it would be an away goal. But... We've not looked like scoring today yet, have we? We have one shot on target in the first half. We're going to demand more. I think we probably need to, I don't know, sling an extra striker on in the second half. Maybe. Yelladucci plays it forward. Domenico turns nicely and scores! And that's a huge goal for Domenico! And it was such a good goal as well. What a tight angle. What a goal. And it's an immediate reply from Bourne. And it's 1-1 and it's an away goal. And Domenico is if it hadn't have been for Cerner Jackie, 
this guy on a free transfer would be signing at a save. I still, and I mention it every time he does something ridiculous, I don't understand how we got him for free. I don't understand why nobody else seemed to want him. But he is, uh, he is a superstar. And it's 1-1. And now we've got a chance, because now we are ahead in the tie. And Bayern have got to come out and play at us in the second half, which they've not done at any point during the tie so far. They have not attacked us. Now they've got to, and we know how good we can be on the counter-attack. So hopefully, that was close. Hopefully them pushing men forward means we're going to get more opportunities to get in behind them and punish them with, with Cerner Jackie, with Cook, with Domenico, using their pace. Although we set out with an attacking instruction, we really build a solid back, we build a solid defence, a good playmaker in front of that solid defence, and a quick counter-attacking side. Doesn't matter though if they're going to keep scoring because now they can just defend again. All the good work from Domenico and it's undone. Was that Ariel? Our Ariel involved in knocking us out of the Champions League potentially. There he is, Ariel playing for Bayern. It's of course where we sold him to. Foose with the long throw, looking for Cerner Jackie, doesn't find him and it falls to Steinman who finds Benia. Back to Steinman again, Cerner Jackie. Steinman once more, Cerner Jackie this time. I thought he's going to give it to Foose on the overlap. He looked at him and then decided against it, turned back and gave the ball away and it's all self-inflicted. Certainly two of the three goals they've scored today have been utterly our fault, just sloppiness. This is, this is not the way to do a final season at a football club. This is going out of a whimper. We were supposed to go out with a bang. We were supposed to go out on top. This is why series end with a Champions League win. I know there's going to be people saying, oh, you've got to do one more season now, Kev. No, I can't do another season of this. I've made my peace with the fact it's done. I've, I've spent a year getting it ready to hand over to someone else. I would, have, I would have made a lot of decisions differently if I was going to be here for another two or three years. It's Alex Ferguson syndrome at Manchester United. I've announced I'm going, and because of that, we're not as good anymore. Cerner Jackie hits the frame of the goal. I mean, it doesn't matter anymore. We've got to score twice, and we're not going to. Um, right, Benia's anxious. Let's get him off, get Brezzanio on. We're going to go two up top. And that will do for now. Let's demand more. And nothing. Cerner Jackie's been poor. We'll take him off. Send a message. We're doing we're doing good work for whoever comes in and replaces me by sending a message like this to Cerner Jackie that it's not okay for him to not turn up for big games. Because he does turn up for big games so often, and then sometimes he just doesn't. Same with Cook. The whole attack has let us down today, apart from Domenico. So we're going with a very, very different looking front four. And if they manage to grab us a goal or two, then it gives me some things to think about, I guess. We're building for the next generation. Oh, why did I sell Soma? Giladucci with the long throw, looking for Calderon. Can't find him. It falls to Labinkovic. A goal here, and the last 10 minutes are going to be very interesting. Foos. Plays it back to Diaz. Somebody get the ball into the area and score a goal. Do a football. Come on, cross it. That's not a cross. That's a terrible pass that gives the ball away. Why is Foos so allergic to crossing? How is he the best right back in the world? Because he can defend. Who cares that you can defend? I want Arango back. I want wingers who play in the back four. I don't want defenders as my full backs. What's the point of them? Ah! So it looks like our Champions League run is over. I'm not very happy about it. We now pin all our hopes on the World Club Cup. You never know. We might still win the league. <laughs> oh. I'm recording these in advance as well. So I, the next statement is pure speculation. But the one piece of consolation I've got in my head at the moment is if non to Legend is anything to go by, I imagine views are massively down at the moment and no one knows this is happening anyway. Because once the Champions League has won, there are so many people who think, yep, yeah, yeah, that's done. Turn that off. Come back next series. So I imagine there's not many people watching. So this, this won't be mentioned. No one will remember this happened and that's fine. Oh, this is what I get for being tempted to play in the World Club Cup. <sighs> if I'd have known I was going to do it in the other series, we'd have ended. We'd have ended it there and then. 
you don't watch the Apollon series as well, you should. We've already played in this World Cup Cup we're waiting for. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sad. We've got to pick ourselves up against Arsenal. This is this is back to back knock at knockouts from com competitions. We've just got knocked out of the FA Cup off camera. We're now knocked out of the Champions League. And like I've said multiple times now, we just have to win every Premier League game for the rest of the season. It's not even been close. This has been hideous. This has been hideous. We can't even we haven't even got the excuse that it's not our full strength team. It's our play it's our team. It's our best players. We have a consolation goal with three seconds to go to make it look closer than it ever was. And it's even that's been disallowed. Ha! Ha ha! Awful. Awful. Aggressive. Wasn't good enough. That felt like the kind of performance in Europe I was expecting Bourne to have at this point of the save. Last year was clearly just a fluke. Oh, and their manager's Gareth Southgate. Goodness me. The silver needs resting as well. This Arsenal game is going to be interesting. If we lose it, there's a very good chance we'll just come back for the Club World Cup. <laughs> and won't even bother showing you the rest of the season. I'll just get a sulk on. Oh. So just the one change for the must-win game against Arsenal then with De Silva on holiday. Nixon Burke comes back in, who has been having a very good season. I would suggest... Rating wise, best defender this season. Um, I could probably check that. De Silva might edge him slightly. Um, so Nixon Burke was a seven. Yeah, okay. So De Silva is the best defender as ever. Uh, but Nixon Burke better than Diaz. I think that's. I think with Diaz wanted by multiple clubs. I think if I were to stay on, which I'm not going to. Pretty sure I'm not going to. I'm not going to. <laughs> oh, I'd probably sell Diaz, especially with the new guy coming in. Right, let's get into this game. It is must win. Therefore, we must win it. Um, I haven't been paying attention to see how Liverpool have been getting on or whether they're even playing now. We do need to keep an eye on Liverpool. We we face everybody else in the title race as part of this run-in and know that if we beat them, we go above them. So the only team that's outside of our control is Liverpool, who are not playing today. This game puts us two games ahead of them. But if we can win it, we'll be only four points behind, albeit with them having two games in hand and a better goal difference. So we definitely need a Liverpool collapse. But a Liverpool collapse means nothing if we don't also win this game. We've got to we've got to get ahead of them and get ourselves into the position where them collapsing actually means something. And a draw or a defeat doesn't get that job done. There has been nothing in this first half so far. 37 minutes on the clock. We get a free kick and Serna Jackie, I think it is, it's the crossbar from the header from the Cook corner. It comes all the way back to Foos. Foos, of course, the former Arsenal man, never got an opportunity at Arsenal. Um, I can see why, having seen how poor he is going forward. Um, he's one of these, I mean, he's a, he's a Gary Neville style right back. He's a, he's a good defender, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't pick him ahead of someone who's actually, I wouldn't pick him ahead of someone who's actually going to offer you some width going forward. Um, right, aggressive. Far from pleased with what I've just seen. Must score a goal. Come on, boys. Now Arsenal have a free kick from the exact same spot, pretty much, that we got ours from, but they've won a penalty off the back of it, I think, and it's Foos. We have a new scapegoat, everybody. His name is Stephen Foos, the best right back in the world two years running, and he just annoys me. Mendoza can't repeat his penalty heroics from the, uh, from the Bayern game, and we now have an absolute mountain to climb to stay in this title race. I said in the intro, it could all go wrong today. I said it tongue in cheek, not expecting it to all go wrong today. I I had faith that we do what we always do and pull off the unexpected. We haven't, have we? We've sold too many players. We've relied too much on youth. I've done everything everyone's been telling me to do for the entire series. And I've proven why it would have been a bad idea to do it when it really mattered. Because youth isn't good enough. Bring bring on the old men. Oh, let's get Gomez back. Right. Um, that'll do for now. In fact, let's get Giro all six foot seven on him. 
on these near posts at these corners. Where is he? Which one is he? Why can't I find him? Is that him? No. So where's our right midfielder? Have I even brought Giro on yet? I haven't. He's still on the bench. That's why I can't put him on the corners. So now we bring him on for Benia. <laughs> I've lost my mind. Right. Get him on that. Now we can get him on these corners. Because he is enormous. But he's still not scored a header for us. Now feels like the time to correct that. Because we need goals. Go score three of them. Come on. Right. Foos with the long throw. Um, I don't know who he's looking for, but it wasn't the big lad. It was whoever the number 13 is, Agostino. Wrong player to aim for. It should have been the enormous boy. There he is. Mr. Enormous Boy. To be fair, I don't think I've told them to send him up for corner for free kicks. What is wrong with us? What is wrong with us? Oh, I've never seen things fall apart to this extent. Agostino and the keeper's got it. He had it all along. I don't know why I could get creative. I should have shouted at him. I'm, I'm just fed up of shouting at him. It's not having any effect. They know I'm going, even though I haven't announced it in-game because you can't resign at the end of the season in-game. You can only retire at the end of the season. And I don't want to retire because I'm going to stay on as England manager. But they they know. They, they, they watch the videos. They know I'm done. They can see by the by the way the transfers have been managed, by the way the squad has been managed this year, by how much youth is getting an opportunity. They know. They know. They know. We all know. I've started a project without giving myself three years to see it through. I've started the next great team here at Bourne, laying the groundwork for who comes in next. When I should have just had a glory year with the last great team at Bourne and kept Ricardo and kept Sarmiento and kept Gomez and kept Soma and just gone on one everything again with a good squad of older players who I'd spent years developing. But no, I wanted to be clever. I wanted to show you how good my youth, my youth recruitment had been. And I firmly believe when we watch the five years in the future, these youngsters will be the stars here at Bourne. I think the team, I still think the club is set up well to survive as a, pre, as a Champions League club without me. But we ain't winning anything of note this year. We won the Carabao Cup yesterday. We will come back tomorrow for the final couple of games of the season just to make sure we do get back into the Champions League and to say goodbye to domestic football. And then we're off to the Club World Cup. And hopefully we can win that and at least end our time at Bourne with a trophy celebration and being able to call ourselves the best team in the world, even if we're currently only the fourth best team in the Premier League. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.